Now, some of you might not be in a rush to get to Anthem's endgame, but if you are, there's a few things that you just got to know, man. It'd make your life easier. It would have definitely made my life easier. So without further ado, let's get started. Right off the bat, guys, this is a chart that's been passed around all over the place, but it's a chart that I think you need to save. This is made by FireDragon04. He's been updating it for like the past month, and I believe this is possibly his latest version, but it shows you what each Javelin has in terms of their abilities, as well as their melees, ultimates, combo effects, super important. Speaking of combos, what even is that? We know it's some sort of text that jumps up on the screen. Sometimes things go kabloomy and makes us all warm on the inside. Let me just tell you, combos is where it's at. Your goal in Anthem's Endgame is to constantly be activating combos as much as you possibly can. Now, if we take the Colossus here, there's two different kinds of abilities. There's primers and there's detonators. Matter of fact, there's three different kinds. Hold on, let me back up. There's three different kinds of abilities. There's primers, there's detonators and then there's just raw damage or in some instances blast damage of which we will get to in just a minute but first up let's talk about the combos and primers if you see something that has a circle here that is a primer if you see something that has this detonator icon that is a detonator lo and behold it's like ham and cheese right ham is our primer cheese is the detonator so in this instance i would hit someone with a flamethrower which is a primer this will throw up an icon above their head stating that that person has now been hammed or in this instance primed you would then follow up with some cheese which would be something like our lightning coil and this will result in the combo text there popping up on the screen and you now received an extra 30 percent damage but that's not all if you look down below here on this chart every javelin has a different combo effect which greatly benefits the squad as a colossus my combo effect is the best effect when it comes to dealing with large groups of ads as whenever i activate my combo effect a huge aoe effect goes off which does pretty massive damage to all the ads around me now again every one of these javelins have a different combo effect and what's so beautiful about activating combos is someone else can prime the enemy for you and you can detonate off their primer and vice versa you can prime for them and they can detonate off of you, which is really good for you and your teammates to be communicating as this allows you to have consistent amount of combos going off, resulting in you dipping back into that extra damage as well as activating one of these combo effects. Now, now that we got that out of the way, let's move to damage types. Now, we have fire, acid, electric, ice, and impact and blast. Now, this is gonna be a little bit confusing. I'm gonna try my best, guys, because I, I like to make things as simple as possible. Fire burns enemies, therefore it does damage over time. It's been stated that fire is really good against armored enemies as well. Acid is said to be very good against armored enemies. And by the way, armored enemies is things like enforcers, tanks, things like that. But in terms of dealing with heavily armored enemies, acid is by far the best here. Now moving on to electric. Electric is really good against enemies with shields. Matter of fact, I think it's been said it does 40 to 50% more damage against enemies that possess those blue shields guys so things like elementals that has those blue shields on them it does more damage to them ice on the other hand also does more damage against shielded enemies but not as much as electric the beautiful thing about ice though is that after you melt that shield off you can easily freeze those enemies in place now impact and blast those things are like just raw damage. So for instance, on the Colossus, I have a flat cannon. It doesn't really have any affiliation. It just shows damage, but that is impact damage. Now it's important to know what kind of damage your ability does as the inscriptions that rolls on those abilities will determine if that ability is a good roll, a god roll, or a garbage roll. So let's identify one of these garbage rolls as well as a good roll. Because sometimes you can roll an item here that has both a good and bad roll on it. My final judgment here, which is a legendary ordnance launcher, notice that it says blast damage. So obviously anything down here that buffs blast damage is good. Now there's nothing here that's actually buffing blast damage, at least specifically, 
but physical damage actually buffs blast damage because physical damage is anything that is not elemental. So what you could take away from that is physical actually buffs impact damage as well as blast damage. Now, another thing to take away from physical damage is that it also buffs weapon damage. But in this instance, physical damage here, this 225% increase in damage, which is pretty substantial, is only buffing my legendary ordnance launcher. And you can know that by seeing that gear icon there. That gear icon to the left of it indicates that that inscription is gear specific, as in it's only buffing the item that it's on. Whereas you see the javelin icon to the left of ammo for both of them, for the drop rate and the pickup amount. That of course applies to my entire javelin. Now notice here at the bottom right, it says elemental plus 150% damage. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes you get a roll that is either mediocre, God rolled, or just crap. In this instance, this is mediocre because the physical damage obviously gives me that plus 225, which is really nice, but the elemental damage does nothing. It's a wasted inscription. Not only that, it's got a gear icon here, meaning that it's gear locked. Now, if it said elemental plus 150%, but has a javelin icon, that would still be a really good roll, as I would just use like an elemental ability for my other ability to benefit from that inscription. Now, as I mentioned, guys, physical damage increases anything that is not elemental. So for instance, I have a rounder's blaze. This one comes with 175% physical damage. And then my rounder's blaze right next to it comes with a 10% damage buff as well as 125% damage buff. Now, even though that says specifically weapon damage increase and the other one says physical, the physical is actually doing more damage because it is a higher percentage increase. So therefore, the plus 175, which is a greater percentage, is the better option here. Now, moving on, legendaries versus masterworks. Which one's actually better? If we take, for instance, my rounder's blaze here that has that 175 5% increase in damage and compare it to my legendary assault rifle rounder's blaze it seems that the legendary version might be a little bit better because it does have more damage there at 413 instead of 359 and it only comes with one inscription that actually buffs it which is that plus 20 percent auto rifle damage considering that rounder's blaze is an assault rifle Forgive me guys, I'm still like stuck in destiny. They're called assault rifles, but I keep calling them auto rifles. Now the looter in us says that the legendary obviously should be the better version, considering that it's more rare, but it's actually not. The rounder's blaze here on the right, the masterwork, is the much better version as this weapon has a much greater inscription buff allowing it to deal much more damage here than the legendary assault rifle honestly guys the best rule of thumb when comparing these weapons is to take the highest damage value and divide it by the lower damage value. So for instance, I would take 413 and divide it by 359. This will give me 1.15. What that number is supposed to mean is that no matter what, if you were comparing both of these auto rifles that had no inscription buffs, the legendary version of Rounder's Blaze by default would be doing 15% more damage than the Masterwork version. What this means is if you have an inscription on your Masterwork weapon that has anything north of 15% damage buff in terms of inscriptions, then it's more optimal for you to use the masterwork version than the legendary version, as it will be doing more damage for you. Speaking of damage values, how do we calculate damage values in the game? I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's really hard to test damage values in this game. In Destiny, it's pretty easy. I, I have one constant, one control environment, which is an ogre called Greg. He's perfect. I'm able to sit there and well on him all day long and get damage values. I have yet to find that inside of Anthem, but from the damage values that I have collected, I can tell you that in order to actually calculate your own damage, all of your buffs are cumulative, meaning they are to be added to one another. So I like to rock Voltaic Dome here. It increases my E ability, which is my heavy assault launcher damage by 18%. Simultaneously though, my assault launcher, which is Garrett's hammer here, has a physical damage of plus 150%. Now, when calculating our damage here, guys, we wouldn't take 8,210 times our 150% times the 18%. Instead, you would take the 18% plus the 150%. And I hope this math doesn't throw anyone off, but 150% is 1 plus 1.5 plus 0.18. After attaining that value, you times that by the damage value there, 
which will get you somewhat in the general area of what your damage value should be. Of course, this is greatly increased by many other factors. So don't go into a squad environment and start seeing different damage values and go, oh, my math is wrong. Different creatures have different damage resistance, which can result in our numbers here being somewhat fudgy. And of course, there's also other things that's included. Somebody could be sitting there priming for you and you're actually setting off combos. And that combo number, of course, is going to be much higher than whatever it is that you calculated here, as well as any type of components that are actually buffing your damage. So keep that all in mind, guys. I will say this, actually nailing down the exact damage value you should be hitting is really hard for us to do when we don't have everything in front of us. We don't have a control to actively test everything on. And there's also some confusion, and I've seen it on Reddit, on what base damage actually is. You'll see some percentages there that says increase to base damage by X percentage. Does base damage actually mean the damage value that it presents to us, or does it mean something else? Regardless, the main thing to take away from all of this is all of your percentages are to be added together before ever being applied to the damage value. And this should get you somewhat relatively close to the damage output that you should be hitting. Now that pretty much wraps up our javelins, guys. Understanding what your javelin is doing, your combos, gear icons, and inscriptions. I'm gonna link some things in the description below that you can go click on and look at yourself. If you wanna actually just look at some readouts, save some screenshots, things that might help you in understanding your javelin a little better. With that being said, I do wanna add one last thing and shout out to my Twitch subs, Crustacular, as well as Sergeant. They were talking about it earlier in my stream and we were talking about curated drops and it's been stated that legendary contracts have a higher chance of rewarding component masterworks and strongholds have a higher chance of rewarding gear masterworks. Now there hasn't been a lot of testing on this guys, so just one last thing I wanted to include. If you're specifically going after some masterwork components or masterwork gear items, I have still gotten gear masterworks from legendary contracts as well as components from strongholds. But I did notice an increase of gear masterworks from strongholds as well as an increase from component masterwork drops from legendary contracts. Well guys, that's pretty much everything, man. By the way, if you are looking for a squad to team up with inside of Anthem, our Discord has nearly 15,000 people in it. Many Destiny players, but many, many active Anthem players. Feel free to drop on by, guys. Post in the Anthem chat. People are constantly posting up screenshots of their weapons, their armors, as well as their builds. So feel free to come on by and check it out. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Thank you.